Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told out of voice the radio. So today, well, lately, we've been talking a lot about these new McDonald's promos, the ones that people have been going a little bit crazy for over in the US, because it's Pokemon's 25th anniversary, and there's a new Pokemon promotion, and people, well, let's just say the news has been full of stories of people being less kind than they could have been, I think is a polite way to put it, going and hoovering up all of these promos and just generally not being particularly nice and friendly people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are some other McDonald's promos that I don't think you've heard of that make for, as far as I'm concerned, a far more interesting story. Now, like many things nowadays, this all starts with a conversation with the lovely Antoine Boulet, Yes, our favourite person to use for translations at the moment, but also just, frankly, one of our favourite people. And Antoine sent me a picture a little while ago of this fanby. And I went, well, hang on a second. What's that? And the question Antoine was asking was, hey, Wossy, did, did this fanby ever make it over to you? Did this fanby ever see a release in English? And I did a little bit of digging. Shout out to Bulbapedia for helping me do some digging and from these images. And essentially, no. And look how wonderful this fanby artwork is. And this never got an English language release. And this got me thinking, right? Well, hang on a second. What is this card? Now, the digging becomes fairly easy because on the bottom right-hand corner of the card, you can clearly see a McDonald's logo, which means this is a McDonald's promo card. And a little bit more digging shows us that there was actually a set called the McDonald's Pokemon E-Minimum Pack that was released in one month from January the 26th to February the 24th, 2002, in Japanese McDonald's. And interestingly enough, right, if you guys are really looking for rare cards, cards that other people aren't going to have, cards that do have the potential for exploding in value in the future... These are the kind of cards you want, ladies and gentlemen. These are the kind of ones you want. Because they were released for a one-month period 20 years ago almost over in Japan and never got translated. These are the kind of cards that your average person is not going to actually have. Now, the good news for me, of course, is that the McDonald's fan P, according to Antoine, tends to sell for somewhere in the region of 500 to 1,000 yen. Even on the very top end there, 1,000 yen, you're talking £6.60 or 9 US dollars. So that's not a particularly expensive card. This fan P isn't going to make you rich. But there are other cards in the set which are, shall we say, quite a bit more sought after. Like, for instance, for argument's sake, the Pikachu. Now, the price of the Pikachu is all over the place, but a little look on eBay shows us that, although there is weirdly one going for about $75, there are a bunch of people selling it for somewhere in the region of $200, and given that it's an exclusive Pikachu that was only available for a short period only in Japan 20 years ago, that might be one to keep an eye on. Of course, while we're talking about these cards, the coolest one, I mean, other than Fampy for me personally, of course, has got to be the Bulbasaur. And it's an easy marketing thing to do, right? But check the Bulbasaur. They have gone and taken Bulbasaur's vines and made the Golden Arches. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, the Golden Arches are how McDonald's refer to their own logo. It is um, honestly kind of weird, and I'm not sure how much I should enjoy it, but I do. So you know what? Let's just enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just enjoy it. Now, essentially what happened was that you went along and you would actually get a booster pack of six cards, including at least one hollow and one basic energy. Now, according to Bulbapedia, each of the six energy cards had a hollow and a non-hollow variant. And what's really cool, because this was back in 2002, this was in the e-reader era. Now, for those of you that don't know, the e-reader was a peripheral for the Game Boy Advance. 
And essentially, if you look at the side of the cards, and there's there's those little line patterns down the side, you could swipe these through the e-reader. Initially, what these cards, and I don't know what these specific ones do in the e-reader for fairly obvious reasons, what we had initially was actually it would really unlock cool stuff, mini games and things of that nature. As, and I talked about this a lot in my history of the Pokemon trading card game series I'm doing on YouTube. So go and check that one out and there'll be a bunch more information there. But essentially, as we got later on, it would pretty much just unlock a Pokedex entry for the Pokemon. But that's still kind of cool, right? That still seems like something kind of interesting. Now, they did come in actual booster packs as we can see from the image here. And oh my goodness, I want these. I want these booster packs, <laughs> and it's very, very upsetting. I'm, I'm basically, I'm 20 years and several thousand miles away from actually being able to get them, but I thought these were very, very cool. There's a story that needed to be told, right? And it's not something I saw people talking about. I mean, I didn't know about this vampy until Antoine sent me a picture a couple of weeks ago. So if I've not heard of them, and bearing in mind I basically spend all day every day now sat in front of a computer talking about Pokemon and researching cool Pokemon stuff, I'm willing to bet a bunch of you hadn't heard of them either. So I've already mentioned some of them. I've already mentioned the Pikachu, the Bulbasaur, and the Fampi. They needed to be mentioned first. But let's go and have a look at the others, because there were 18 cards that were available. So we did have this lovely Oddish here, and bearing in mind, right, we're talking evolving Pokemon. These cards don't do very much in terms of playability, but we can at least look at them and how cool they are in the artwork. We got this Chikorita. Now this is the kind of artwork, and you'll see this one was a hollow. This is the kind of artwork that some people are going to absolutely love and some people are going to absolutely hate. It is very distinctive artwork. I'm going to let you figure out where you come down on that one. There was a Charmander. Again, this one is seen as a hollow here. And obviously, Charmander is a very popular Pokemon. Again, none, none of these cards are good, right? If I see any that do seem funnily playable, I'll point them out. But I don't think any of them are, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. There is a Volpix coming in here. And I love the artwork on this one. You've got that little wind effect going through the card. And there's lots of Volpix all doing a bit of running. Which is very cool. Obviously, I should mention here, we're in 2002, right? So, don't expect Gen 3 Pokemon. Because Ruby and Sapphire Gen 3 didn't come out until 2002. The latter part thereof. So, we are very much in the kind of Gen 1, Gen 2 era here. Unless I've missed and some of these are Gen 3. And if they are, I really apologize. But I don't think they are. Hey ho. We've got a Cyndaquil here with a rather lovely artwork of it making some fire, which is kind of cool. We've got a Squirtle, and this is phenomenal. I love the artwork here. Again, it's very distinctive artwork. He's blowing a bubble. It's hollow. This is, it's got to be one of the best Squirtle artworks we've seen, and we can all have an argument about how right I am later. There is a Totodile coming here. Yes, first partner Pokemon are very much being favoured. But bearing in mind, this is a McDonald's promotion, right? McDonald's want to get people through the door to come and buy their food. So obviously, they are going to default to the more popular Pokemon. And of course, the more popular Pokemon tend to be the first partner Pokemon. That shouldn't be, um, that shouldn't be particularly unforeseen we got ourselves a Meryl here there's a Meryl sitting on a bench while another Meryl kind of shouts at him this is one I'm, I'm quite a bit of a fan of as well there is a Chin Chow here yeah I have little to say about it it's kind of cool I suppose there is a Mary who seems to be stuck on a Christmas scene but also seems to be singing Christmas songs so that's all right We've got ourselves an Abra sitting on a tree seen from above, which is really kind of cool. We've got ourselves a Slowpoke. Again, we've got a hollow here and very distinctive artwork. I'm going to let you decide how much you love that one. We've got a Natu looking wistfully out over the land, trying to decide what lives and lies in store. Reminds me very much of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon in that way. We've got a Sandshrew who seems to be a little bit stuck in the sand. So, sorry, Sandshrew, I believe you can get out of it. 
and a hollow lavatar who's eating something and looking behind him a little bit grumpily. How lovely. And those are the McDonald's cars, ladies and gentlemen. The 20-year-old Japanese promotion, which I'd never heard of, and I'm presuming that you... Well, I hadn't heard of it until a couple of weeks ago, and I'm presuming that a lot of you hadn't as well. So now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me how excited you are to learn about this. Tell me how much you want these cards. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.